Welcome to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com, dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. Serving leaders, managers, and people who will be, helping you reach excellence in your work and achieve your personal goals at the same time. Sign up for the free course at clearandopen.com. All sorts of chaos stuff happens, but it's a sort of controlled chaos. And we sort of, you know, we're okay with that. But we still have this idea that we know what tomorrow is going to be like. Well, now we don't, do we? It was always the case that we don't know what tomorrow is going to be like. That was always the case. Now life proved it. And the ego is like, ah, what? Hi, it's Joseph. And thanks for tuning in to Manage to Engage, the podcast from clearandopen.com. We're doing something a bit different for this series of episodes. While the format won't change, we'll be directly addressing some recent events, the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent economic shutdowns. The effects of the pandemic are ubiquitous and, as you've likely read many, many times already, unprecedented. Economically and emotionally, relatively few people will come out entirely unscathed. But at the same time, there's a spiritual opportunity. So over the next four weeks, I will illustrate why this sudden disruption represents an invitation to wake up to reality and go beyond the content of your egoic experience. I offer weekly member webcasts, online courses, and mentorship at clearandopen.com because it's my truth that with the right tools, anyone can solve the people, money, and time problems holding them back in business. And I share part of these webcasts and courses on this show because I want to help you too. If you're enjoying the show and learning from it, I'd love your feedback. If you're listening to the show on an Apple device, all you have to do is open the podcast app, view the full description of this episode, and click the link to leave a rating and review for the show. Thanks so much for listening. Let's start the show. Joseph, I yeah. think uh, struggling, you know, with, with the, everything that I, I don't, I'm sorry, I haven't been here in a while, but um, a- anxiety, anxiety, address anxiety. Talk about fear. And fear and, um, you know, we've been trained to, to not let our mind do that or try not to let our minds take us to that place. Um, but it, it's difficult. It's mm-hmm. very difficult. But I know that meditation helps and it's been helping me quite a bit. But, but still, it, I mean, I find I'm toggling, you know, yeah. back and forth. Yeah. Inside. Gr- yeah. Let's talk about that. Thanks, Deborah. So to try to stop your mind from taking you to that place is to go to war with your mind. If you go to war with your mind, you'll be at war forever. So this is one of the trickiest tricks to get. And it has to do with a key turning point in spirituality in general. And that turning point is the shift from the ego doing your work to you doing it. And this is so important. This is the crest of the hill. When you can get to a place where your ego is no longer doing your work, that's when the work goes from being a grind to a slide. The slide has its challenges as well but it's different than the grind. So metaphor I've been using recently is that's spirituality is like, uh, you know, in the roller coaster in the beginning, you know, you waited in line for like 45 minutes and you're finally in there and it's like, you're just raring to go. And then, you know, you go up the, the first thing is usually the biggest drop. Right. And it's like, and like, you know, you could be walking faster while this heavy car is being dragged up by this giant chain and you're just like, come on, come on, all right, you know, let's do it already. And then you get over that crest and then you're terrified. That's what spirituality is like. But in the beginning, it's a grind going up the slope. That's the when you're sort of working against the ego, which is really the ego working against itself, which is a necessary phase of development. It's not to run it down. You just you have to do that. Just like to experience the slide, you got to go up. Got to deal with the gravity thing. So 
when the ego is doing your work, you will experience self-management. You will experience that you have a responsibility to manage your states of all kinds. And that's what the ego does. And that's related to this profound opportunity that I, I wrote about. I think the blog came out this morning and I've done some videos about it. This, the more I sense into it, the more I see this is actually, in addition to being uh, you know, a serious pandemic and not, not to be taken lightly, so this is, but this is not just a reframe. This is really a big opportunity, spiritually speaking. Because at any given time, there's favorable environments for doing different things. Like now is really not a good time to launch a business. That's kind of obvious, right? It's not a good time to try to grow a business. Uh, it's not a good time to have a party. You know, it's like there's all sorts of things that it's not a good time to. But what is it a good time for? It's a really good time to wake up. The reason it's a really good time to wake up is because the ego fundamentally is responsible for managing our states. That's what it does. It tries to control our states. It wants to be generally pretty happy all the time. And when it doesn't get its way, it uses personal will to change that. And we think this is normal. And in one way, it is. It's how the vast majority of the population operate, and it's what we've been trained to do. Pursue happiness. It's your constitutional right. I guess uh, the ego's interpretation of that would be to, like, to control happiness. But the idea of pursuing is actually a little more accurate. So see the, that the ego's desire is to control the state, to be able to decide what you're feeling, what you're experiencing, how you're experiencing it. And there's all sorts of downstream ramifications and subsequences. It's the best word I can think of there for that. Consequences of downstream effects. And one of those things is the sort of tacit assumption that tomorrow is going to be a lot like today. That's generally how the ego operates. Well, of course, when I wake up tomorrow, I have some idea about how it's going to go. It never is actually like that, right? Your to-do list, you know, if you get half of it done, you're lucky. All sorts of chaos stuff happens, but it's a sort of controlled chaos. And we sort of, you know, we're okay with that. But we still have this idea that we know what tomorrow is going to be like. Well, now we don't, do we? Now, that was always the case. It was always the case that we don't know what tomorrow is going to be like. That was always the case. Now, life proved it. And the ego is like, ah, what? But I was doing such a good job controlling everything. Were you? So the what I've been saying and writing so much about is this the symptom of shock. These strong uh, changes and quick changes of emotion, that that's actually reality. The, the swings and the changes and the sort of disorientation. Well, the disorientation is, is a resistance to it. But part of this, the, the shock that we're all in, in one way or another, that's the ego failing to control. And that's something to be celebrated. When you're in the ego's perspective, which is an understandable perspective, you're going to really not like it. The ego's like, this sucks. This is out of control. I don't know what's going to happen. What's next month going to be like? That's anxiety. Anxiety is sort of a fear of future hurt. It's going into the future and imagining bad things. It's anxiety, a kind of fear. Worry. Worry is a combination of control and fear. Or control and anxiety. Because, like, the mind says, well, if I just think about this enough, I'll be able to control what happens. So there's sometimes truth to that planning, but then you notice you're thinking about it again and again and again and again, and the only result you're getting is just going crazy. So, 
the the opportunity here is I keep trying to think of a good metaphor for this, and I'm it, it keeps eluding me. It's sort of like wanting to get wet, and suddenly it starts raining, or wanting to get wet and being dropped in the ocean. It's like, oh, this is perfect. This is giving you what you need. And would you put grief in that camp, or is that in a different category? That's a good question. Grief, I would say, is a healthy emotion. I mean, all of, I mean, all, some emotions are healthier than others, and it's reasonable to be grieving. I mean, it's, it's not that I'm not, again, I'm not running any of these down. I'm just saying the, all of this stuff is inside the ego. So it's not that it shouldn't be felt. That's where I'm going to get to in a, in a second. Grief is on the health, healthier side of things. Grief as opposed to like despair or depression, which sometimes it's, tell, it's difficult to tell the difference. But grief is related to sorrow. And sorrow for me is one of the three primary healthy emotions, passion, joy, and sorrow. Those to me are the three core healthy emotions. And then there's shadow sides to each of them. Content-based happiness is the shadow side of real contextual joy. Depression is the shadow side of um, depression. And control is the shadow side of passion. I just made that up. Never thought about the shadow sides of those three. That's cool. I think that's it. I, I may improve upon that later. And then there's lots of downstream, and then it becomes mixed of you know light and shadow. But to see that all of these uh, reactions to the content of your situation are all the domain of ego. And again, I can't say too many times. That doesn't mean it's bad. Far from it. That's real too. But it, what happens if you experience your experience from something other than ego? So, like, for example, you can go into the we don't know what life is going to look like a month from now. How long is the lockdown going to last? What's going to happen to the economy? We can go into the I don't know there and cause ourselves panic, or at least mild fear or discomfort. But take a moment to really dwell in that I don't know. Find the center of it. Like, what is really the quality of that I don't know? When you take away all the content, I don't know what the economy is going to be like. I don't know what work is going to be like. I don't know what the world is going to be like. Just cut off the end of those and just stay in, I don't know. I feel a sense of calm for that and and acceptance. Yeah. No, just, I don't know. Yeah. So why why am I pretending like I do? Because I don't. Yeah. I think for me right now, it's others Mm -hmm. that can bring up, you know, the anxiety and you know the, the super ego that, that's trying to get into your way because it's hard enough to control your own, much less you know to help to help others with theirs. So maybe you could speak to that a bit. Yeah, sure. Yeah, well, that's related to it. I mean, the first thing I would say is for for many people, especially if they've not been working on making peace with I don't know, there's nothing they nothing you can do for them. It's like, what do you do for someone who, um, you know, was eating deep fried cream cheese balls every day and then they have, a, you know, a, a heart attack and are dying? You know, you, you can't improve their health in that moment. It's too late. So I think that's one thing is just to realize the limits. And, you know... The, the heart attack is an example, a sort of an extreme example to make a point because you won't know if someone can come out of fear until you try. So what I would say is let people tell you how helpable they are. And so if they're stewing in fear or whatever, despair, whatever it is, and you offer a hand to see if you can help them get out of that ego death spiral just listen very carefully to see how well they use it 
And if they insist on staying in it, then let them accept that. Because that's just what some people are going to do. Thanks for listening to Manage to Engage, the clear and open podcast. Join us next week when you'll be a little bit closer to who you're destined to be. Until then, know that Clear and Open is dedicated to the evolution of you because businesses grow when people do. If you want to help the show grow, I'd appreciate you leaving a rating and review on iTunes. All you have to do is open the Apple Podcasts app, view the full description of the episode, and click the link to leave a rating and review. Or you can go to clearandopen.com slash review, and it will bring you to the right place. If you're looking for more support on your journey, head over to clearandopen.com for even more tools, articles, and free resources. Thanks so much for listening. Bye for now.